And welcome back to Subculture After Dark. Well, listeners, I can tell you that there is a very, very special album that is about to come out. It is by, of course, Cadaver, and it's called The Age of the Offended. And we thought tonight we would actually get Anders on the phone to talk a little bit about this absolutely amazing album. Welcome to the program, mate. Thank you very much. Now, mate, this is an absolutely brilliant album. Like I said, I fell in love with this album on the first listen to it, but it's also a very, very important album. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what the initial ideas were when you first sat down to work on this album. Well, uh, basically, as a musician, you always want to outdo whatever you did last, and... uh, uh, most uh, bands say that this new album we have is the best we ever did and uh, blah, 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 all that stuff. And uh, sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. But for me this time, it really feels like uh, my uh, seminal album with Cadaver because it has all the elements uh, of the band and uh, for the future of the band in it, which... Uh, it's totally amazing to me as a part of the band, also as a songwriter, because I have probably the best lineup I ever had, uh, also meaning creativity and uh, musicianship, but uh, it feels like my music finally is in the right place at the right time in a special way with this album, because... Um, uh, this kind of extreme metal that we're doing uh, seem to have developed into all kinds of specific genres. And what I wanted to do with this album was to go back to where it all started and uh, let the album be inspired by all the original ideas we had for the band when we kicked the band off and we were not able to do it because of young age and inexperience but this time it really feels like it's a very uh a lot alive album i mean not a live album but it feels like it's come alive in a way which makes it feel and sound very inspired and very human and very out of this world at the same time so i'm really stoked about it what were some of those original ideas that you had for the band when you first set this up, what were some of the things that you wanted to achieve back then that you weren't able to, but you've been able to achieve now? Well, first of all, when you have to remember how young we were when we started off. Uh, I was 15, 16, you know, so it's uh, obviously been playing guitar for maybe three, four years. And uh, me and the original drummer were in different constellations of bands until we split with everybody because we wanted to make things more extreme and more strange than everybody else in 87 88 uh, it was a so uh, very different kind of world also musically the the thrash metal was a huge part of our upbringing and uh, also uh, the more extreme bands like uh, you know early death metal bands and early black metal bands like uh, Bathory, Celtic Frost, Hellhammer um, also possessed uh, Morbid Angel. Uh, Morbid Angel actually came in when we started the band as an uh, inspiration. Also, uh, Carcass and uh, Napalm Death, and uh, also some hardcore and strange stuff like AOD and uh, Carnivore and Voivod, obviously. And uh, we just wanted to mix all our influences into one band and. Uh, the way we sound now is probably if I heard this one, this album when I was 16, I would be totally floored and want to copy everything. But luckily for me, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm uh, in the band and playing this amazing music with the amazing musicians, so I'm really happy about it. Now, of course, you've been through a very tough ride yourself. Um with your own health issues, and I have to say, um, from one cancer survivor to another, congratulations, and I'm glad that you're doing so much better. How much of what you went through during that time do you think that you've put into this album as well? Oh, pretty much everything. Uh, 
what I learned most was to be myself and be true to my own ideas and uh, moving forward, being confident that uh, this is uh, more than enough. You know, uh, I've achieved so many great things through life, uh, through music, and uh, now I'm just uh, about to enter my life 2.0, so to speak. So I wanted to be more creative, more... Um, you know, focused on music and uh, make uh, every day as important as uh, the day before all the time and uh, make the most of it. So uh, I'm trying to uh, get as much music done as possible, basically. Having my own studio makes it much easier, of course, so I can literally go to work and just work on music constantly. And uh, I'm really happy that I... I'm able to do this and uh, that I'm allowed to do this and um, I can just uh, operate in a, uh, in a world where uh, people are paying attention to strange stuff too. So it's uh, a good way to see a nice future for uh, what I'm doing the way it turns out now. The title of the album as well, The Age of the Offended, um you're in a similar age bracket to me and you knew a very, very different world going back 20 years ago. Tell us a little bit about where the title of this album came from and what you wanted to kind of explore with that theme as well. Well, obviously, I don't know how old you are, but I'm 50 now. So I've, uh, like you said, seen a total different world in all aspects. And... uh, uh, the humor and sarcasm that we grew up with, with, uh, you know, things like Monty Python and uh, intelligent humor yep. that pointed out things in society, whether it be religion, politics, or uh, even just uh, being a human being in the world. All that stuff was very important for our upbringing and for, uh, you know, how to think about things and how to think for yourself, uh, most importantly. And now it seems like the whole idea of social media have turned everybody into uh, small, uh, uh, much smaller people somehow, you know. Yep. People are afraid of being uh, examined for their own beliefs and uh, whatever they think about things has to be second thought. And they have to... Uh, you know, be afraid that something they say or post or something can be used against them. Like, everybody's a criminal somehow, you know, yeah. just for thinking the wrong thing. So I wanted to, uh, most of all, make fun of it because I think humor is a very important factor. And whenever I'm saying things totally bombastically, it's always with a sense of humor, you know. Uh, uh, one guy in Norway who's doing something really, really good, I think, is uh, having an organization uh, that is called Metalheads Against Bullying. Yeah. Because I think that all of us in the, especially the extreme metal world, have had experiences growing up being bullied by others. And bullying is, of course, a huge factor in this uh, uh, age of the offended thing. But that's a different thing because I think... Back in the day, you had to meet people face to face to be, you know, impolite or whatever it was, you know, uh, and you could read body language. But now with all this social media, everybody can sit and scream into their phone about all kinds of things that they shouldn't really focus about. You know, they should focus more uh, about themselves and what they can do better in the world and rather than pointing fingers to what everybody else is doing wrong or whatever, you know, if you, I learn a lot from, you know, uh, being sick as I was, the, the worst thing you can do to yourself is to stay angry with lots of things because staying angry with a lot of things just destroys your own mind. You know, it doesn't destroy the mind of the people who you're angry uh, against or angry, you know, towards. Because they don't fucking care. And uh, all you do is to, uh, you know, become a smaller person if you think uh, all the time about what others are doing wrong. Be a bigger person and let let, uh, people have different opinions, different mindsets, whatever makes them happy, so to speak, and then focus on what you can do. And I think that the term bullying has is, is changed over the years as well. I mean, 
I grew up in a time period where, at a high school like my high school, if you listen to metal, you would be bullied. You, but that kind of bullying was being bashed after school or being beaten up. Um, whereas these days, a friend of mine just got suspended on social media for three days because he called someone an idiot. It's like it's a very, very different form of bullying what we went through compared to what is considered bullying these days. Yeah, I mean, we learned to grow thick skin, first of all. I think that's an important factor, too. Uh, yeah. What I remember as a very, you know, one thing which is totally gone now, which is a, was a huge part of this uh, underground music culture, was that whatever we were doing was not supposed to be for everybody. And it was very clear that if you attracted the wrong kind of fans, so to speak, if you had, like, huge numbers and stuff like that you would be suspicious that you were you know that artist was selling out or you know trying to reach the wrong crowd so to speak and uh, for me now to look at you know uh, bands being concerned about how many followers they have how many you know all those numbers you know as as if that was really an important you know important thing to be liked by as many people as possible that's uh, totally uh, wrong, uh, in my opinion. It's more like, are you attracting the right kind of people? How many they are isn't really that important, but is it? Uh, it's what you do connecting to the people you want to connect with. You know, you don't want to connect with everybody yeah. if you do extreme metal. And uh, I think uh, that aspect also uh, is a a leading star when it comes to creativity because you should always only focus on what you really like yourself and if you really really like it yourself that's that's all that matters then people who are like you somehow or think the same way or like the same kind of stuff they can be totally different kinds of people too but they connect with the exact same thing and that's all that matters Definitely. Now, you mentioned before as well about the talented musicians that you got to work with on this album. And of course, you've got Ronnie and Dirk there. Tell us a little bit about how they became involved with this album. Because I understand Ronnie came on board to do one song and then stayed for the entire album. Yeah, that's an incredible thing, actually. <laughs> I mean, Dirk's been a part of Cadaver since uh, uh, we started working together initially in 2014. So we, we were we have already almost 10 years together working as a, in a partnership creativity. Uh, but Ronnie, as you say, uh, the, uh, the thing I wanted to do with this album was go back to my roots. And the roots was uh, obviously before Extreme Metal was a thing. Uh, TNT was the only Norwegian heavy metal band. And their album, Nights of the New Thunder, really made a huge impact on me uh, when I was 12 years old. And my first ever band was called Deadly Metal, uh, named after one of those songs. So I wanted to make a tribute to that. And uh, doing that, I knew that I would have to change a lot of things in the song to make it more like my style. So I basically destroyed the song. And I was really anxious to find out if it was okay with Ronnie at all that I changed uh, most of the <laughs> riffs, really. <laughs> And I uh, sent him a demo, and he called me the same day saying, like, this is fucking amazing, this is amazing. So he then said, when you've done this, uh, I want to record lead guitar on this song. As a, you know, And I was like, wow, that's an honor. And I uh, went up to his studio with this one song in mind, and he was just going ballistic over the whole song. Then asking can i play on more songs i'm like wow yeah sure you know i just had like a few rough mixes with me so we just went into another one and another one and realized okay uh let's do this full on so i came back for a whole week with uh, him just doing insane stuff on all the songs and that made the whole album complete in a way which i didn't really foresee but i had some ideas in my head but what he did was so out of this world and something i would never have been able to do with anybody else so it's a really important part of the album now and uh 
we will also look forward to do this with him live and uh, possibly also record a new album after that. We'll see what happens. But uh, anyway, having him on this album for me means like a full circle for my creativity since I was a small kid until now. So it's amazing. Awesome. Well, you kind of led into my next question there as well, because my next question was going to be, the album comes out next week. Um, what are your plans after that? Are you hoping to get out there and do some live shows? And is there a chance we might even see you in Australia at some stage? Yeah, that all. Yeah, of course. I mean, that all depends on uh, how, uh, you know, people uh, react to the album and if it, uh, you know, attracts enough attention to uh, pay for those tickets to Australia, which is kind of expensive. You're on the far end of the world from where we are, you know, so it's yeah. a big, big, big undertaking for any band in any genre to go to Australia. But uh, of course, we would like to come there, but that's, uh, let's see how it does in Australia and we'll be there for sure. Well, Anders, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us tonight. It's been an absolute honor having you on the show. And Thank you for all of the amazing music that you've made over the years that so many of us have loved. We love this album and we cannot wait to see you here, hopefully sometime in the future. Thank you very much. And uh, to the Australian fans, all you have to do is to be as many as uh, flight tickets for the whole band and the engineers will be. So we'll see how things goes in the future. But uh, for now, you can enjoy the album.